didn't say turn the NDI mode off? Or no, I turned it back on so you would have it. Let me get my tap, NSP laptop. to connect I don't know if I'm going to turn it off for some reason should have it now Yep, yep. Uh, that's coming in. Uh, give me the. Uh, yeah. Do you have the blind? Do you feel like. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're, we're really in a little bit of you, Ryan. Ryan. And. Um, I don't know what you want to do. Full graphic of me. There won't be a full office of me. You're all going to be this full graphic and then side by side. Uh, you know what? Actually, you probably should need a full office. Okay, let me see the full office here for a second. That's it. That's it. I'm just looking to see. Oh, let me get up my. All right, so I better have my. I got to get a different keyboard, man. I got a comment. Last week, every single time I hit enter on the keyboard, this guy commented, BAM! BAM! And then the last time he's like, poor keyboard. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't think it was that loud. Okay. Let's see. I wonder if I should set up so I can do the app also. Because I was just setting up the Apple TV. Could just knock out two videos right in a row. I'm going to have it ready just in case. I might just be grooving and moving and go, let's do it. You know what I mean? Okay. And we decided now, okay, because I'm going to have the program monitor on in front of me. So if I do vMix, I can still look at the camera until it's not full me. Can you keep this in 
preview. But yeah, it should be all right. It should be fine. I'm overthinking something and making something that's very simple, very complicated. So I'm not going to do that. It's amazing how clean an office can look when there's crap everywhere, but they just can't see it. in front of that code book that's well that's a drawer handle okay I think it looks good okay so this is the only screen I need captured here can you get this one okay I have frame okay, I'm running it I am on Start it. V mix. Okay, it's definitely working. Are you in the right network? No. Are you on the right network? You're plugged in, right? Yep. Hmm. Okay, well, let me just re-download the next. Plugged in on MHE hotspot. Okay. Uh, Plugged in on MHE hotspot. Oh, you're on MHE hotspot? That's not right. Can you turn off your Wi-Fi? Well, MHE hotspot is the... I lose TV and stuff. Turn off that Wi-Fi right there. Oh. That uh, froze. That's gone. Um. Which may be okay. Well, you could actually turn the Wi-Fi on and just disconnect from that. Click on that and uncheck connect automatically. And click MH Tech. Click connect and see what it does. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know what the key is for that one. Okay, that should work now. Now, do you have my thing here? Vmix capture, desktop capture, vmix.com. I want to read down one of this. I got to download, download desktop capture, download now, save. I'll close this. You know what I'm going to do? Because I don't want to have problems, Brian. Let me just do this real quick. I think this is going to save us a lot of headache right here. Rather than you and I fighting capturing a window that we know sometimes we have issues with. I'm just going to do this. So Dan's going to call in supposedly. And tell me what's on the question stream so I don't have to watch it.
Am I okay uh, in the side by side where I'm at here? Hey man. All right, so just mute your phone unless you need to tell me something. That way I don't hear any background, anything to distract me. Uh, a, a lot of static, but other than that, no. That's perfect. Yeah, I was muted. Have you got your uh, NDI back and all that now? Uh, no. I got the camera stuff. I'm still not seeing the laptop. Um. A brand new fresh download of it. Hmm, Windows Defender was blocking it. You should have it now. So it's four connections yep. ready. <sighs> okay, well, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever had Windows Defender block VMix before. It would be very difficult to do a live stream. Um, very difficult. We're not doing Instagram, by the way. Okay. Just so you know, I'm not. I'm not streaming this to Instagram. Not for the 13 people that watch on Instagram. I'm talking to Brian Morgan. Yeah, I'll say, hey, Dan.
Hi, I'm Brian House with MikeHolt.com, and tonight we're going to have a little bit of a different program than we normally do. We're actually going to talk about the capacitor learning system. Um, so if you're an instructor, you're in charge of a training program, um, you teach continuing education classes, or you're just interested, you're welcome to join us tonight. We are not covering any electrical technical things tonight at all. Now, uh, this will be a little shorter program. If we have time, I'm probably going to do a section on Mike Holt's Electrical Toolbox app as well, which is free on the Android and Apple App Store. So we'll see how our time goes. We'll see what kind of questions we have. Uh, these videos are going to be a little different style than we do sometimes. I think I did one a few weeks ago. Uh, these are actually being reused on our shopping cart and being reused inside the capacitor. They're going to be kind of instructional help videos for when you don't know how to do something. You'll click a little help icon and it'll show the video. But if you're interested in the learning system, you're interested in how today's apprentices are leveraging technology and today's instructors are leveraging technology to be able to teach remotely pretty much effortlessly, um, to receive excellent electrical training using state-of-the-art materials and a state-of-the-art learning system to hang around. We've got some really cool stuff going on. So I'm going to bring you in uh, to my laptop and I'm just going to kind of give you a tour through all the features of the capacitor learning system. Now the capacitor learning system is, is kind of uh, my baby. I started with Mike uh, several years ago and I said, you know, Mike, um, we need to jazz up our apprenticeship program a little bit. I'd like to see this. I'd like to see that. I'd like this. I'd like that. And Mike's like, what are you telling me for? Brian, go take care of it. Take care of business. One thing led to another and we hired actually an entire team of developers which I have actually in our Ocala office. We have two offices. One is where you guys get all your books from. It's all the wonderful people that you talk to on the phone, Angela and Jeff and Sean and Eileen and Sherlanda and Kirsten, all the wonderful people where my counterpart, Belinda, actually runs our sales and fulfillment department. The other office is in Ocala. And here in Ocala, what we do is we write software and we actually produce all of the content that you guys receive. So we produce video content, we produce web content, all that type of stuff. And, you know, we're kind of one big happy family, so it doesn't all actually happen in any one place. And, of course, Mike is over everything, except for this. This is kind of like my little secret bat cave. Mike, actually, I'm not positive, has ever seen this. Uh, maybe once, possibly. Uh, it's just been something that over the last three or four years, we've slowly developed in collaboration with our instructors and said, hey, what do you need? What can we do to make it easier for, to, for you to do your job on a daily basis so you're not doing prep work and you're not just, you know, writing lesson plans and what, what can I do to make your life easier? Almost every time the reply came back, anything that we can do so that we can come in very quickly, review what we have to teach today and then teach it and then give the students some sort of an evaluation so that we know that they've done their work and not have to grade it. Well, that's all I needed to know. I went on a hunt for some custom learning software, couldn't find anything, called up Mike and he's like, if you can't find it, build it. And so that's just exactly what we did. So I'm gonna take you on into the capacitor learning system. Be a series of small videos. Um, each one is gonna be on each section of the capacitor learning system. Feel free, especially if you're an instructor, to just jump in there, ask questions. Uh, if you have comments or ideas, throw them in there too. We're always open. I've got a great team of guys that work for me. They work on this software almost every single day. And the cool thing is this software has actually blossomed now to the point where we've been able to start bringing it into our CEU program. So we've actually got some really exciting stuff we're going to be releasing for CEU in just the next probably three or four weeks. Uh, we actually built a live webinar pl platform that we're actually streaming a live for credit CEU webinar. Let's see. I think that's next Friday and Saturday that we're going to be doing that. We have a ton of states that have approved this webinar because it's live and interactive. 
Um, we've used it for all kinds of things. Just been it's been a really cool journey, really fun experience. My background, I actually went to college as a CIS major and uh, started actually, I wrote my first computer program when I was 13, did a lot of industrial computer programming. And so this kind of came second nature to me to kind of manage this group of guys to develop this. So uh, let's get started, let's dig into it. So if you take a look at my laptop screen right here, this is the first screen that you're gonna see when you log into the capacitor. And it's pretty simple. What we try to do is we try to keep everything just one or two clicks. You'll notice right over here on the left-hand side of the screen is our code graphic of the day. And what I've recognized as time has gone on is that half of the battle as an instructor is being able to get the students engaged with the class at the beginning. Once you've engaged the students with the class, keep them engaged. And at the end of the class, have a way that you can evaluate what they've learned. And so we thought, well, let's ask the instructors, hey, what's your favorite way to start the class? And we got some cool feedback, but a lot of instructors said, hey, you know, we start our class every single day with the code graphic of the day and the code question of the day because it just kind of brings everybody's focus from work right into class. And I was like, that's a great idea. And we already have it. So you'll look at my laptop screen here. You'll see that the first thing that we have is a code graphic of the day. And if you click that, it actually is just going to take us to the website. It's going to give you the opportunity to look at the code graphic, discuss it in class, and then, of course, you can answer the code quiz of the day. So that said, we're going to go back to the capacitor here. And the next thing that you're going to see on the capacitor is the classes tab. Now, I am logged in as an instructor, and this is just a demo account. So you can see I have 104 students enrolled. I have four instructors enrolled. And if I was to look at my profile information, I would see my name and my user ID. I could look at all the information about my institution, which is a demo institution, and how many active students I have. And finally, when I'm ready to log out, I can log out here. We have a little message icon right up here, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, we're going to start out in the Classes tab. So here's the Classes tab. It, the Classes tab is exactly what it sounds like, and every one of our tabs are, are built the same way. And this tab is actually where, as the instructor, I manage the creation and modification of classes. And you can see I've got quite a few classes in here, just all different things. But we're going to actually start out by creating a new class. So when I create a new class, we have what we call builders. And all of the builders are going to be basically the same. They're going to step you through the process that it takes to do whatever you're doing. So in this case, I have a class builder. So this is going to be Brian's new class. And I'm going to pick... Um, I'm going to pick a demo instructor. I could pick a location if I had a student location. So let's say I had multiple branches. I would pick a location. Uh, we have a syllabus option if you're doing a, a certain particular type of a program. I'm not going to go into detail on that. If you're interested in the uh, demo or the uh, syllabus option, you can contact our office. You can email apprenticeship at mycolt.com and we'll set up a, a demo schedule for you so that you can kind of get into some of the details. The most important thing I have to do before I save this is I've got to pick a start date, which I'm going to just pick today's date, and I've got to pick an end on date. I'm going to pick the end of the week for this class. And it's important to do that because the students have access between the begin on date and the end on date. And I might want to have a custom course intro. In this case, I'm going to say, uh, you know, don't forget your NEC. And then we're going to hit next. I have the option to add as many students as I want. So I'm going to add, uh, everybody's in the same family apparently. We got Doug Awesome, Sean Awesome, Jess, Jeff Awesome, and Don Awesome. So we're going to add all those students. And if I had a particular guy uh, that I wanted to find or girl, I can see that we have Mary Awesome and Mary Amazing. I can just type in the search bar here, and I'm going to add Mary Amazing. Once I've added my students, I have the opportunity to pick what is going to be in the class. 
the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to teach bonding and grounding based on the 2017 NEC. And then I'll just scroll through and say, okay, what articles of the bonding and grounding book do I want to teach? We'll look at this in a few minutes, but the key to the capacitor is that it exactly matches the book. We've, we've done a lot of work internally to make our publishing process literally from typeset to press to online produce exactly the same quality and the exact, exactly the same experience. We do that with a bunch of custom software that we've written and modified in-house and some third-party software that we've actually had modified specifically for our publishing process. And what you can do is literally follow along in the print book with the instructor's PowerPoint or with the online course. So the student's actually able to take their tablet or their phone on a lunch break. If they want to read the course material, they can just read right through it. They might be at home working off of an iPad and say, oh man, I want to you know, review my homework or having a discussion or an argument with a coworker. Hey, well, let's look it up in the book here. So we've tried very hard to do that. So in order to kind of make it easier to use, if you look at my screen here, you'll see that we actually have these books split up by the code article. And this particular class, actually all I'm gonna cover is Article 250, Bonding and Grounding. So I'm gonna add that to my class and I'm gonna hit Next. And this is just kind of a review where I can see that I have Doug, Sean, Jeff, Don, and uh, Mary Amazing all in my class and that I'm teaching this assignment. And if I wanted to edit something, these little pencils are the edit buttons. You can click on those and change anything. My class starts today and it ends on the 31st, so I'm gonna save my class. And then if we look, we can actually see that Brian's new class is right here. And as I view it, it'll show the one assignment that I have in the class. I did that kind of fast, so hopefully you caught it, but um, I just went into the search bar here and I looked for Brian. And here's Brian's new class and I clicked view class. All right, so let me look for a different class. I want to look at Electrical Apprenticeship Year One. Now, this is a class that was already built, and we're going to take a look at this um, so that I can show you kind of how the different buttons work. I want to go through grades, the syllabus, the view class, the take attendance, just to kind of show you how the different features work. Um, yeah, can you, Brian, can you do a side by side for me? <clears throat> so what I have is I've got, first of all, the grades tab. So if I look in this electrical apprenticeship year one, you'll see that my grades tab, when I click on it, is actually going to open up and it's going to show me the students that are enrolled in the class. It's going to show me how many assignments each of the students has completed. And it's going to show me their current class average. This is a really great way to just kind of see if you're leaving any students behind if there's any particular student that's having an issue following along and seeing how many assignments they've completed. If you know, in this case, we have 47 assignments and a demo one student has completed six. Well, if I know there were supposed to be six completed, then the other students that have completed zero, which are obviously just fake students that I've added, well, they're behind in the class. Now I might wanna look and see, okay, well, I see what they've completed, but I would really like to know what have they started on. So I'm going to click on demo stu one student here, and we're actually going to look at his grades, and it's going to actually show us where he's at in each of the classes. So if we go to my screen here, we can see that uh, this first assignment, which is an OSHA review quiz, he completed this uh, in November. He got a score of 90, and he did it in just four minutes. So Hopefully it was a pretty quick course. Um, and you would know that obviously as you're teaching it. And here's another assignment, he got 100% and the time spent was 19 minutes. And then he's got some other courses that are on the list that he's assigned he hasn't completed. And there's some courses with 100%. So really just kind of gives you kind of a drill down view of what the student is doing. And you'll notice here there's a little download CSV for those of you that need to submit grades to uh, be reviewed or if it has to be entered into some other type of learning management system. 
So that's where we're at so far. The only other feature that I'm gonna that I'm gonna cover here is I might cover two others. Well, let's start in view class. So view class is where, as an instructor, which I'm logged in as right now, I can actually see the assignments that were given for the class. And when I go into view class, I can actually go into these assignments if I want to open them up. But the coolest thing is I can also do a screen share. So we actually have it set up where you can click a button. It'll share your screen so that you can do a remote teaching session for your students. And during that remote teaching session, the really cool thing is it opens up a really cool little chat box right here. And the chat box just kind of gives you the opportunity um, to interact with the students kind of on a real-time basis without having two-way video. And a lot of people are like, oh, why would I want to interact with the students on a chat? Well, in this new kind of learning environment where we're all having to do remote teaching, everybody's really worried about having people on camera, but a lot of people don't necessarily have a dedicated space to do their learning in. It may be in their home. A lot of times courses are done in the evenings and privacy is a big concern. And, and here at Mike Holt Enterprises, you know, we make a lot of efforts to keep your data safe and, and we certainly don't want to require you to invade somebody's privacy. So if you need to do Zoom or whatever you want to do, that's fine. You can do that. However, in our system, we just allow a screen share with live audio. So you get yourself a nice little USB mic, plug it in there, do a screen share and off you go. So I'm going to end that uh, broadcast there. Um, chat works just like chat works. You guys use it every single day on one of these. Um, on one of these uh, live streams, actually. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you real quick. Uh, and we're going to go back to our apprenticeship year one class. And this is the take attendance function. Now, if you're doing a live class, this is great, whether it's a CEU class or whether you're in class. You can actually click a take attendance button and basically you have your date and you have your two students here and you want to say, OK, yep, they're both here. And it date time stamps the students into the class on that date and it just creates a permanent record. And let's go ahead and move down if we go to my screen here to students. Now, before I move on to students, um, have we got any questions that have come in so far? And it looks like the answer is no. So I'm going to move on with students. All right, the student builder is just like the class builder. It works the same way. A lot of the functions are the same. And so we're able to actually do the same exact thing as we go through this. Once you've used one of these builders, you've used them all. Now you'll notice here I've got a, an extra tab and if you decide to use a capacitor learning system, this tab is just like the students tab, it's just an instructor tab. And this uh, has got the same function as the student tab and it allows you to add instructors and you can see we have three instructors in here. Getting back to the student tab. The student tab has the same builder, uh, so we'll just start at the top here to add a new student. And it's really just fill in the blank. It steps you through everything. And at the end of the process, this little checkbox right here, as long as it's checked, it actually emails the student a temporary password. And the student's able to click that and log into their account for the first time and reset their password. Outside of that, let's take a look at some of the options that we have for the students. So the options we have for the students are as we, we can message the students. We can reset the student's password and we can look at their transcript. Now, remember earlier I told you up at the top here, we've got this little message box. I'm going to cover messages next, but until I cover messages, just kind of keep in mind that this message box right here allows you to directly message the student. Each student has got an edit button that allows you to go in after you've created the student and edit any of their information that might be incorrect or may have changed a uh, name change or an email address change and when you update it that student's records are immediately updated. They also have a student transcript. Now let's see if uh, Awesome Doug has done any work here. So I'm going to download Awesome Doug's transcript and open it mainly because I actually don't know if he's done anything. And sure enough 
you can see that Awesome Doug has completed one assignment in this class and he actually got 100%. And this is all of the assignments that he has not completed yet in the class. And we're going to log in as a student here in just a minute and just review how the student view looks. Now getting back to the message button. So if I wanted to message Anne inside of the capacitor, I have an option to send her a message directly. And I can just go in here and create a message title, what the priority is. And I want to say it's test time. And, you know, um, there's a test. And I send the message. What happens when I send the message is if I open my message manager right here, we can see that students have received messages, but also that I sent a message out that it's test time, it's a high priority, and then the students are able to respond. Nothing fancy here. This is strictly something that just allows you to have something internal where you're able to interact with the students without using email. We know that a lot of students don't have email, and because they don't have email, we're able to interact with them on a, on a login basis without having them checking their email. It seems like the younger generation is, is far more interested in messaging than they are in email. So that's basically how that works. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and log out as the instructor. And we're going to log in now as a student. Look we'll at an idea of what the student view looks like. A student's dashboard, it's all the instructors are like, well, we got to know how to direct the students what to do. Well, the good news is everything looks the same. So the student dashboard works very much like the instructor dashboard does with a couple minor differences. They have still the code graphic of the day, so they're able to, anytime they log in, jump in and take a look at the code graphic of the day. They also have a class tab, but their classes tab actually shows the classes that they're currently enrolled in. And they're able to jump between classes. If you're a school that has multiple classes for the same student, they can jump in and out of classes as they need to, especially if you're doing some live classes. Or it's possible a student has to do some sort of a, uh, maybe they're doing their OSHA class separate from their electrical class. However it works out, it gives you a lot of flexibility. And again, it was just that class builder that we used earlier. Very simple to set up, very easy to add the dates. This also allows you to let the students know, okay, these classes are what you're going to be doing, but maybe the only one that's active is the first class that we have right here. In this electrical apprenticeship year one, the student's able to click the grades tab and he can actually look at what his grades are, how he's doing. He can download his grade report just so that if his boss says, hey, how are you doing? He can say, oh, let me email you my grade report. And it's just pretty much identical in, in almost every single way. We also have uh, the ability when they enter the class, if this class was actually one that you were live streaming, there'd be a little classes live now, and you might have seen that uh, previously on the instructor login. And the classes live now button actually prompts them to turn on their speakers and their microphones so that they can just interact with the instructor and they'll have the little chat window setting off to the side. The students actually, as they go through here, are able to keep track of their work. This is really kind of the modern version of a class syllabus. Before you had a piece of paper, you had a PDF, and you would send that to the student, and the student had to keep it or lose it, which is usually what happens, and they really wouldn't know like what's the next thing they're supposed to do. And so it, there are solutions, but it was frustrating. We decided to make it easy. So this class, it just drives them through one at a time. And we can see that this student here has actually completed two assignments. And we can tell that because we've got the green check marks on these two assignments with a grade next to them. But if you look at the little blue clipboard right here on the next assignment, we can see as a student, oh, this is the one that's in progress. And these two are not yet started. So I can go, oh, I better jump in here and actually finish up this assignment because I know it was done. And so what will happen is I'll jump in and I'm reviewing scaffolds and let's see here, I'm not going to actually read anything, but I'm going to answer some questions. Let's see if I get anything right. Uh, let's see, phrasing, no, nope. oh, any of these, boy, I'm not going to do very good at all. 
And we're just going to click our way through here real quick. You'll notice that everything's giving me multiple attempts. And that's actually intentional. What One of the big things that, that Mike has always embraced, and, and certainly that I support, is a positive learning experience for the student. And everybody's like, oh, you know, these wimpy students these days, this and that. And there's actually a tremendous amount of research that has shown that when you leave something with a positive impression, your retention level is very high as compared to leaving something with a negative impression. And so what we like to do is give the student on homework assignments two chances to get the answer correct because they can actually go back to their book, check the book, go, oh man, that's what the answer was. And this is just a quiz here that we're doing. So there is no book to go back to, but I'll show you in a moment a different type of assignment where you're actually able to go through the book and look at the graphics and read the material and answer the questions, and, and, and which is the reason why we're giving the students two tries on everything. So if we go back to my laptop here, I'm going to finish this up. Now, I did not do very good on this. I got a 60%, but right at the end of my quiz, it let me know, okay, this was my homework. I got a 60%. Me personally, I would be freaking completely out and I would be calling my instructor and saying, is there any way you can reset this so I can take it again? And maybe they can and maybe they can't. It just depends on how their, their school is set up and what the dynamic of their um, assignment structure is. But, you know, I'm one that even if I got a 60% once, it would be the last one of the year because if I know I had two chances and I got a question wrong, I'm not making my second try until I know I have the right answer. So once I'm done, then I'm actually able to close out right here and jump back into the capacitor. And we're going to go into a different type of assignment now. This type of assignment is going to be uh, more along the lines of what our books are like. So in this particular book, I don't know, I think I'm going to do, uh, let's see what we've got here. Let's see if we can pick something interesting. How about uh, not started yet, Unit 8 Math. Now, little secret here. This is actually available for free online. Our entire electrician's math is a PDF. Go to mycult.com and the menu on the side, click on uh, free stuff and then go down to the electrician's math. Get that PDF. Even if you've been in the trade for years, it might be a good refresher. Uh, if you're studying for something, great thing to just brush up on before you start studying. It's also included in our exam prep books. So if you're doing exam prep already, you don't need to download this, but just a really great, simple, simple, simple review of math. But what you'll see is this is going to exactly match my book. And it's going to give the text and it's going to give the examples. But you'll see as I go to the next page, what I just learned on this page, it's going to now ask me a question or two to just kind of reinforce what I just learned on that page. And this is critical in the learning process for a student, which is why we try to make sure that we have every few pages, at least questions on key topics. So in this case, <clears throat> I'm going to answer the question and, you know, I'll better get my calculator. So uh, let's see, 4 eighteenths, 4 divided by 18 equals, okay. And I'm going to finish that baby up. <clears throat> it takes me to the next page. On the next page, you'll see that we actually have a graphic. And the text and the graphics are going to exactly match the physical textbook. In fact, uh, I wonder if I have uh, that. Let's see. If I was a little more prepared, I would have already had this book, and you just missed me digging around in my cabinet trying to pull this out real quick. Basic Electrical Theory, which is the course we're taking. So this is Unit 8, so I'm going to go in the book to Unit 8, and I bet 6, 7, 8. I should be able to find this graphic right in the beginning. If you look, I don't know if you can see that. And there it is right there, right in the beginning of the book. So the graphics, the text, everything is going to exactly match. The beautiful thing about the digital books are if there's corrections, updates, edits, graphics, whatever, 
when as soon as those are made and we have a team that works on our books every single day of the week i mean we work on these books every single day in code season out of code season we're always working on the books when that update is made that thing is immediately published online so the students online will have absolutely the most accurate content possibly available at least of our product anyway and that's just a commitment that we make to you guys so if we move back out of here i'm going to go ahead and close this assignment now is up uh, get a lot of times questions what happens if the student just x's out the window no problem every time you make progress it actually is stored in the database that progress is so the student would not lose any work if they close the window out there's nothing to save nothing to do it's just kind of instant type of a deal and so now we can see that i went from not started on unit 8 math to in progress pretty cool stuff so I'm gonna kind of go back here and on the classes tab there's another tab that's called completed and what we're able, able to do with completed is as we complete assignments the students actually gonna see their uh, resume if you will of their work completed right here and they'll be able to look at their grades so in this particular class which was Frank's class we're able to see that this demo student completed one assignment, got 100%, spent eight minutes. So this is really good for the students to be able to go back and go, man, how, I'm really struggling with you know, Article 250. I wonder why. Oh, I haven't even taken an Article 250 class yet. Now, I remember I sent a message a little earlier, and you see this little red icon bouncing right here? Well, that little red icon just lets the student know when they log in that they've got a message. And you can see there's all kinds of messages in here and we just sent some stuff just to have the icon bouncing to be totally honest with you and of course the last thing is the calendar and events and we're able to actually enter notes for the student test dates uh, job fair days it's a typical calendar feature but it's just stuff that's pertinent to the student and pertinent to the class that the student is in maybe that's uh, unrelated to the rest of their life. So when they're in class, you want to be able to have access to the important class details. One last feature that I want to cover before we, we kind of wrap this section up, and that is the Material tab. Now the Material tab is pretty important. If we go to my screen here, the Material tab is actually the student's access to all of the books. And what they're able to do is browse the books. This is really the student's favorite spot to go. This is where they go when they're on a job site and they have a question, they just grab their phone. And by the way, all of this is completely mobile friendly. So the student's able to use it on a phone if they need to. Print is a little small, to be honest with you, but, and the pictures are a little small, but you can pinch zoom, it works really well. But they're able to go in here and if their school has uh, purchased the videos to go along with the books, they can actually watch the Michael videos right here, like all of them, right on the capacitor. Uh, they have access to the books right here, and they get literally, it's the same thing that we just saw, but uh, for instance, oh, I don't know, let me look at uh, Article 90 here. It's going to be without questions. So the student's able to go through here real quick and go, man, I want to see, uh, I know a couple pages in here. Oh yeah, adequacy. I was curious about 90.1. So they're able to just kind of go through that. And if it was on a mobile device and I could swipe, it's a little more intuitive but um, just really great to have immediate access to that and then uh, finally if there's practice questions that are available for the students they're able to do those here and then uh, obviously as exams are assigned they're here for review as well so that is the materials tab so i'm going to just pause for a second here before we start the next segment and uh, do we have any questions? I know I've got uh, Dan, uh, one of our stream moderators. Dan, do we got any? Do we have any questions? Oh, outstanding! We got some questions. All right. Okay, we got Barry on Facebook. It is a community college instructor. Okay, and what's his question? Oh, okay. Um, question is, if you're interested in the capacitor, who do you contact? That is a great question. I probably should have said that. You've got a couple options. You can call our office, and uh, if you've got any of our books, the secret code is right at the bottom. That's the phone number. Uh, but it's 1-888-NEC-CODE. If not, you are 
absolutely welcome to email either me, brian at mycult.com, or if you'd like to email our apprenticeship staff, we have got a great apprenticeship staff, by the way. If you're an instructor, you have never been taken care of better than our apprenticeship staff. I have a full-time instructor support specialist that literally his job is to take care of you and make sure that you're a success as an instructor. We have a phenomenal, great instructor program that's designed for people that stand in front of a class and teach where you can get certified as an instructor. And uh, we've got a great sales staff too. I mean, your sales support, Sean is amazing, just amazing guy. We do a lot of work helping schools get approved for different programs in different states or multiple states. And I work with Sean on almost a daily basis on new schools or returning schools working on those programs. So Sean at MyColt.com is another great person to email. And if you forget all that and you're just like, I don't remember any of that stuff, just email anything at MyColt.com. It doesn't matter because we have this awesome salesperson in the office. Her name is Angela. And Angela gets all those emails, and she's going to call me and say, hey, you got some crazy guy that emailed some crazy address at mycolt.com. What do I do with this? And then we'll send your email. But uh, So Brian at mycolt.com or apprenticeship at mycolt.com, either one of those, a uh, great way to get in contact, and then we'll get you taken care of right away. Uh, what else have we got, Dan? Okay, I'm going to love this one. <laughs> Okay, hold on. We're going to do these one at a time. So I have Pete, and he says, okay, Brian, uh, I have a program. Who are the instructors? Can a contractor be an instructor? That's a great question, Pete. So Pete, um, I think, is Pete in Florida? Is that where he's at? I believe he's in Florida. So Pete, it depends on your state. Uh, I believe you're here in Florida. So in Florida, for sure, you can be the instructor. You can actually have your own apprenticeship program in-house. I actually did it. If you need it to be a registered apprenticeship, then you'll need to fill out the paperwork uh, and submit that to the state. But the good news is all the hard stuff we already have pre-done for you. So you just have to fill the business stuff out, submit it to the state and get your program approved. The instructors can be literally anybody. As a matter of fact, some of the best instructors that we have run across, and, and me personally, I travel quite a bit and speak with a lot of the instructors, are guys that topped out as an apprentice. They got their journeyman's card, and they're like, man, I love electrical code, everything. I want to be an instructor. And they start out as a basic electrical theory instructor, and within a few years, they're teaching level four or five. And, and those sometimes, those they're so connected to the student they make some of the best instructors, to be honest with you. Um, as far as being an instructor, we have everything laid out in a very simple fashion. And I'm not going to go in depth um, during this session talking about it, but we have like literally our lesson plans are laid out, cover this page through this page in the book, cover this slide through this slide in the presentation, watch the video from this section to this section. So even if you are like, man, I'm not a total like code guy, but I'm pretty good and I really want to have a program because either we don't have something where I'm at or I don't, I'm not happy with what we have, you can do this. This is laid out so that a guy that works all day can do 15 or 20 minutes of prep and then come in and teach a class in the evening and be successful doing that. And of course, if you're a seasoned instructor and you know what you're doing, well, you're going to love this because you're gonna be able to just take what we have and it is just gonna make you that much better as an instructor. So to answer your question, Pete, anybody can be an instructor. Um, if you want a certified program, you're gonna contact your state, you're gonna submit an application, you're gonna get approved, fill out all the paperwork. If you're doing it in-house and you just wanna train your guys, which I highly recommend, if you have employees and you're in the electrical industry, education is key. And sometimes you can just start out with a theory book. Get your guys all a theory book. You got four or five guys and you want to just do theory together, do it together. It doesn't even have to be like you stand in front of a class and have a projector. Although, to be honest with you, that's a really great format to teach in. Sometimes, and I did this many times, we all sat around the work table. We had our books out and we would watch a video or we would have a discussion or even just read through the book together and then do the assignments. So anybody can be an instructor. All right, now Dan, there was another part to that question. What was the second part of that question?
Okay, so Pete says, can I tailor the material to suit the needs of my company? So Pete, that is 100% what you do. Um, I did not have a registered apprenticeship program for my business. In fact, it, we were too fluid and did too many different types of work for it to really be beneficial for me as a contractor to have that because we weren't a very large company. So what I would do is I would actually teach on Mike's material that pertained to the type of work we were doing. Well, when we were doing residential work, maybe I would explore uh, Article 334 and I would explore Article 352 and cover and M cable and PVC and, and the rules related to that for my employees. And if we were doing, um, you know, low voltage, maybe I would go into Article 725 and we would look at what the rules were there. And if we were doing swimming pools and we would all sit down and we would cover Article 680 and it added like a real tangible element to the teaching. So you can certainly customize what you're teaching your employees based on the type of work you do. What I would tell you, though, is generally speaking, we all touch most of the code. I have a lot of people that are like, hey, do you have a residential only program? Do you have a commercial only program? And my answer is we really don't. We really believe that there is no residential section of the code. They actually used to, and I'm not sure if they still do, they used to have actually a residential code book that was kind of like a condensed version of the code. It wasn't super popular because the first time you walked into like a little vanilla box build out, you didn't have everything you needed right there. And you're like, oh man, I should just have had the whole code book because I need to look up, you know, I don't know, MC cable rules. I don't actually remember what was in the residential code book, but it was pared down. So there would be things that wouldn't be in there. It's the same thing with your apprenticeship program. My suggestion, and, and this was kind of a unique approach that Mike took many, many years ago when he started teaching the NEC. My suggestion would be this start with the beginning start with basic electrical theory and then go into the understanding volume one and and start at article 90 and go through the first four chapters and build a foundation and then once you've gone through those first four chapters then cover bonding and grounding and then do understand the national electrical code volume two and then learn about leadership skills and learn about we have a really great lesson plan i got to be honest with you i mean i was heavily involved in developing it I'm not going to say that I wrote the whole thing because I kind of took something we had and, and just really kind of turned it into what I would have dreamed I could have had as a contractor. But I, I really kind of built it with the contractor in mind so that you have an employee that is educated and skilled and able to make you money every single day. And they're learning things at the pace they would need to learn them as they gain experience in the field. And we're not starting them with you know, hazardous and classified locations before they even understand what the general rules are for installing conductors and raceways and what the different types of raceways are. So um, you can definitely tailor it, but I would encourage you to, you know, maybe consider just doing a full program unless you're like, no, my guys are actually really sharp. We're really into the code and we just need to kind of have a program that focuses in this one particular area or we're a very focused contractor and we only do one kind of work and I really just need a focus program in this area. So that is certainly uh, something that you can do and it works very well. We do have customers that are like, hey, we're in petrochemical. I need these articles and only these articles and I need all of my guys to know those like the back of their hand every single day of the week. Well, you can definitely do that. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Pete. Uh, we have anything else, Dan? Okay, Juan's got a question. Okay, is the platform good for CEUs? So that's a loaded question, right? So yes, Juan, we do have CEU instructors that use the capacitor. Um, if you're interested in that, I would encourage you to contact me directly, brian at mikeholt.com. Um, we've got some unique challenges that CEU instructors face and we've got some unique features to help you do that. One thing to keep in mind as a CEU instructor is the only material that's available on our platform is Mike Holt materials or materials that we have approved to be included as part of our apprenticeship program. So if you have a CEU program that has a particular requirement for a certain state and it's not something that we already have included, you wouldn't be able to include that in the platform. So uh, I'm gonna kind of give you a maybe answer on is it good for CEUs? And the answer is it could be. 
uh, it would just depend on how your program is designed and, and what the content of the program needs to be. So is that, uh, is that all we got, Dan? All right, so we're going to do, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I kind of had a good time myself. If I can get my, uh, got the Apple TV up here so we can bring that online. So, uh, well, I got, uh, I'm actually not seeing the Apple TV, so you might want to make sure it's powered up. Um, so while Brian's getting that up online, I'm going to actually um, kind of diverge from the capacitor here for a minute. We're going to actually look at uh, Mike Holt's Electrical Toolbox app. He holds it up all the time on the screen. You know, he's like, yeah, look at my app, look at my app. This is really cool, guys. I I have actually no, I don't even mind pushing it because it's free. We've actually, we've spent a lot of money developing this app. We actually originally partnered with somebody that had an app um, that was actually not bad. It was not a bad app. Um, but Mike is, is just, man, he has just a wealth of knowledge. And he looked at this app and he's like, man, this is good, but we can make it a lot better. And so what we were able to do is just um, focus on getting this app useful. And it looks like we are having technical difficulty here. So we may have to take uh, 60 seconds or, go, or so for me to, let's see here. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, Brian, you want to grab my iPad and I'll do the demo off my iPad right there. <clears throat> For whatever reason, it's not happy with my phone. So we're going to do it off the iPad. No big deal. Yeah, go for it. Okay, that was a long question, and I'm sorry I, I didn't have a way to bring Dan on. Dan's one of our moderators on the YouTube and the Facebook, and he actually is a consultant that works for us pretty much full-time, to be honest with you, on the books and the videos, and great guy. Just absolutely love him, and, but I couldn't pipe him in tonight, uh, so he's just kind of in my AirPod. So um, let me see if I can summarize that a little bit. And who was that from, Dan? Daryl. Okay, so Daryl said, hey, um, who I'm working for, we're using a different curriculum uh, from one of your competitors, and we're very concerned about portability nationwide as far as the curriculum is concerned. Um, Daryl, what I will tell you is this. Um, we have worked with, um, I'm not going to name drop here because I don't want to sit here and you know be one of those guys, but uh, we have worked with many of the top 100 uh, in the U.S., and they have programs that are for sure available nationwide and they're very portable as far as students coming into our program you can have a student come into our program from any other program we have a uh, matter of fact if you go you know what let's just go to my uh, i'll show you actually how easy this is daryl uh, let's go to my computer here i'm going to go to uh, i'm going to go to mycolt.com i'm going to go to instructors and schools I'm going to come down here to Apprenticeship Programs. And this is kind of hidden, Daryl, so you have to forgive me. If you want the link, um, I'll have Dan post it. But this is our Certified Electrical Apprenticeship Program. This is the one that we recommend if you have a four-year or five-year or even one-year four or five level or two-year four or five level program. And this program actually has an overview that includes all the requirements for every single level. If you're bringing a student in, and I'm, I'm not going to spend any time here, uh, Daryl, you're welcome to kind of browse this, but if you want to read right down here, what we actually do is we show you what the prerequisite would be for a student to, they call it testing out, but really just coming in from a different program into our program. We basically recommend that you get them the books from the previous year. So if somebody, let's say a student comes in as level two, we recommend that you get them the level one books so they have those to study with. Um, but also, in addition to the level one books, 
we just recommend you let them come in where they're at. Look, some of these guys, they've been in the trade already for five years. They did their time. They already spent an entire year in an apprenticeship program. They're coming in. They're expecting to be level two. They probably learned some stuff. And even if they didn't, it's not the end of the world. They can study and catch up anything that's a gap between the two programs. And because our program is so linear, and because all of our books are very linear, we don't jump all over the place. We're very much from beginning to end on every single thing. That's how Mike works. And I love that, actually, because you always know where you're at and you know where you're going. And so they're able to come into the program. They're able to begin wherever you're at, level two, level three. And then they have the other materials to study and they have the other materials to reference and review from. And we encourage the students. We just say, hey, listen, do yourself a favor and just kind of go back and do some of the assignments on areas that you know you're not strong in. Uh, but if they came in, for instance, level two, um, they can come in with uh, without having done any type at all of my cult work and come right into our level two program if they've completed level one with a passing score. And we, we recommend 75% of year one, level one, whatever you want to call it. Same thing for two, same thing for three. Now, we don't have, um, and I don't believe it's a, it's a good practice to let somebody just come into an apprenticeship program and test out as an apprentice. I, I haven't figured out why you would want to do that. Um, I think if you're ready to take your test, then just go take your test. You don't even need to be in an apprenticeship program. Oh, I've been 10 years. Okay, well, fine. You know, come in at level four and um, just go take your test or don't even do an exam prep, you know, set up an exam prep and do exam prep for your guys and just let them go take their journeyman's exam. But there are some companies that need those registered apprentice apprentices. They need them in the program. They're trying to meet quotas and there's federal job requirements and all these types of things. Um, so would encourage you to just kind of explore this page. And uh, Dan, if you wouldn't mind um, just taking that link and posting that up there for those guys so that uh, they have that. So that was a really great question. I appreciate you asking that. Okay, we're good to go. All right, so we're going to go to my iPad here, and uh, I'm going to open up the Mike Holtz Electrical Toolbox. So we can get that baby up on the screen. And um, so this is what the electrical toolbox looks like. It's actually pretty cool. And I'm just going to run through, I'm just going to run through real quick the um, six different applications that are in the toolbox. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'll catch questions on the backside. I will tell you this. I encourage you, if you download the toolbox, um, watch the little ads that are in the toolbox. We run some really good uh, discounts in the electrical toolbox that we don't really run anywhere else. So if you download it, just kind of keep an eye on the ads in there. They're not in there all the time, but when they are in there, they're usually pretty good ones. So let's go to the iPad here and let's check it out. So we're going to start out top left-hand corner with circuit calculations. And we've got a little circuit sizer here. And we'll just do a commercial circuit sizer. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to pick out a uh, 480 volt circuit, single phase. It's going to be a branch circuit. And I'm going to select a, uh, I don't know, 50 amp breaker. And I hit go. And just like all of the functions on our calculator, let's see if I can turn this sideways and make it a little bigger. Nope, not going to work. So we've got uh, a little limitation because I'm broadcasting that I can't do this in uh, landscape mode, but in landscape mode, it would make the text a little bigger. But just like all of our apps, it's going to review your user inputs at the top. It's going to then give you results. In this case, it's a circuit sizer, so it's going to give you results in copper and results in aluminum. So we have a 50 amp circuit with eight gauge wire. It tells me how big my uh, equipment grounding conductor needs to be. It tells me my maximum circuit length, raceway size, maximum continuous circuit load in both amps and VA. And then just like everything, we have notes. And, and I really encourage you as instructors, don't, don't discourage students from using apps. I would encourage you to encourage students to use the apps. In fact, you should teach the students how to use the apps in class so they know what an app is good for and what an app is not good for. And an app is not good for studying for an exam. But an app is really good in real life, and it make you a hero on the job site, to be totally honest with you. Okay, looks like we have a stream problem. Um, 
Are we back up? I don't see any problem with mine. All right, did we cut out? Hey, Dan, how are we looking? We're streaming on, is it Facebook that we're not streaming on, or YouTube, or both? Okay, well, I guess I'm talking to nobody. Let me... Okay, if somebody can hear me, can you put a note in YouTube or Facebook, either one? So I have some people telling me that we're not streaming for some reason. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up anyway, since uh, we're already doing it. Um, so just like all of the rest of our uh, applications on our app, we're actually going to be able to see all of the calculations. And Brian, if you could go to my uh, iPad here, literally step by step how the calculation was done with the code references. So you're actually able to review in the code. Check it. If we made a mistake, we made a mistake. You need to let us know. We will immediately make a change to that. But I'll be honest with you, this app is pretty good. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. We've actually checked some of our books. Uh, I've been pretty pretty impressed actually with how well it worked. And again, we worked with some really great people when we first started this and now uh, we actually have expanded it tremendously in-house. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next application and that is going to be a cooling calculation so uh, i'm going to do a commercial air conditioner and again guys download the app just go to your app store that's one of the number one questions i'm get. like how do i get the app um, just go go to your app store android or apple doesn't matter which one just go to your app store go to um, mike holt just put in mike holt it's mike holt's electrical toolbox is what it's called but just put in my cult and usually come right up and you should be able to download it again it's totally free and you might even want to do it right now while i'm doing this so you can kind of play with it while i'm doing the video so if we go back to my ipad here we're going to do a commercial air conditioning calculation and we're just going to select a system voltage and you know what we're doing three phase 480 we might as well do four three phase 480 we did a single phase and i'm going to pick a uh i want to pick 50 amps again and uh nameplate maximum overcurrent protection nameplate minimum circuit capacity i'm going to put uh, 29 and i'm going to do a calculation and now what it's going to do it's going to review my user inputs it's actually going to tell me my protection size which we entered it so we already kind of knew that it's going to tell me conductor size and equipment grounding conductor size and raceway size and maximum circuit length and again all of the notes that are going to explain how the calculation was done the steps that were used. Now this one's interesting. Some of our calculators have additional resources. This particular one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna click on it, but it's got a video, air conditioner circuit sizing. And I'm sure you open that up and that's gonna be Mike and, and a code of experts or a panel of uh, code experts talking about sizing an air conditioner. And then again, application notes. Now one thing, and I don't think I have my email set up on here. Let's see if I can email this baby and I don't. You can save these calculations but you can also um, email the calculations. And if I had mail set up on here, then I would be able to email it. The cool thing about that is if you have an inspector that's questioning something and you're like, man, I know I did it right. You run the calculation on here, verify that you did the work right, obviously. You can click the email button and it'll use your mail app, uh, which on my phone it would have worked. On my iPad, I don't have my email set up. Uh, you can mail it to your um, inspector and say, hey, listen, I just did this calculation on this app and my wire size matches, my raceway size matches, my breaker matches. All right, so that was cooling calculation. All right, let's go back to my iPad here. Let's, listen, let's stop messing around. Let's do a motor calculation. Because motor calculations can be a little bit of a pain. And I'm going to do a commercial motor calculation. I'm going to select... Um, I don't know, let's do a three-phase 208 volt. And uh, randomly, let's pick uh, seven and a half horsepower. That's a nice size motor. And I'm gonna hit go. 
and literally guys literally you saw how fast I did that I mean I'm just like click 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 done and you have everything you need to know so if you look at my iPad here we've got uh, the review of what we put in there we've got the breaker size of dual element fuse size conductor sizing the maximum circuit length size the raceway size and then again all the calculations all the notes how every single thing was done really this is almost like this is actually almost like instructional so if you're an instructor and you finish teaching this you can go in here do a calculation and then just review the steps with the students and actually teach the students right out of the app that's why we design it's not really designed to take an exam with it's not designed to necessarily for for an engineer that has to know to the nth degree one thing i'll tell you about this what we did was we made some judgment calls um, where the sizing fell kind of like straddled the fence between larger or smaller and um, I don't know you know you could have gone with a 60 this 59 amps or 61 amps you could have gone with a 60 amp disconnect or a 100 amp disconnect well we're like eh, you know what let's just go ahead and put it on a 60 amp disconnect with a 60 amp maximum overcurrent protection and 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 save money so we kind of made the electrician decision that way so you'll see some of that in here and as you do the calculations it'll be pretty obvious to you that we did that so uh dan we got any questions and i'm gonna i'm gonna do maybe one more uh calculation here otherwise okay so trog is is uh, asking about the service load calculations i believe uh over on youtube i wasn't actually going to cover that but since you asked i'm going to cover it so here is uh well, let me go back here i clicked on service load calculations and we're going to run through this this one will take a little bit longer and, and the question comes up is this optional or standard this particular version of the app is the optional or i'm sorry the standard calculation and we're actually going to be releasing shortly a version of the app that will have the optional calculation primarily because the calculation usually comes out much lower on optional so that's actually the one you usually want to use but i click on general information and i can type in the size of my dwelling in this case it's already 2500 square feet i have two small appliance circuits and one laundry circuit so i'm going to move on from there and i'm going to go to my household appliances and you can see in here I've got some household appliances selected and we're not gonna you guys can sit here and experiment with this I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here um, but cooling and heating so Trog was like hey um, can you do it for heat pumps so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into AC condenser one and I'm gonna have uh, one unit and AC fan one and I'm just gonna leave everything default I'm not gonna change anything and I'm going to have heating load. I'm going to have one unit, and the default's uh, 9.6 kW. And then I'm going to have heating fan one. I'm just going to go ahead and so I have a, basically I have your typical um, in Florida we call it a heat pump setup, where you have a heat pump with some emergency heat. Might be a little excessive on the emergency heat at 9.6 kW, but we're going to roll with it because that's what the default is. And then if we go back to the app here, you'll see the last option. Is do the cooling and heating run concurrently and I just check the box I click OK and then I click my little green finish arrow and it reviews all of my user inputs at the top here it's going to actually give me conductor sizes for my service conductors and again we get down to the calculations portion and again I'm not going to spend a lot of time reviewing these but it's going to give you literally every single calculation down to the nth degree and tell you how everything was calculated why it was calculated the notes on each of the steps on things that you might want to reference in the NEC and, and where the numbers came from and this is really just kind of like an awesome review of load calculations if you're it's not something that you're doing every day it's good to kind of remember that and uh, just kind of kind of get you back on track for where you're going with that so thanks for the question, Trog. So I was actually not going to cover that one, but glad that I did. I'm glad you asked the question. And uh, well, it only leaves one left. That's transformer calculations. So I'm going to cover transformer calculations next on the app. And you guys have seen Mike use this a lot of times. I mean, literally, you think, you know, it's like he's super smart. Actually, he is. But you think he's super smart and doing this stuff really fast. It's not. The app is just so simple to use. 
So if we go to my iPad here, we're going to pick a transformer. It's a three-phase transformer with a primary of, I'm going to pick a 480 volt primary. I'm going to pick a 12208 volt secondary, pretty common transformer. And I'm going to pick a 75 kVA transformer just because I happen to like 75 kVA transformers. And I'm going to hit go. And there you go. I mean, it literally is going to give you every single thing that you need to know about installing that transformer. It's going to tell me that it uh, needs 110 amp primary protection, that it requires two gauge uh, copper conductors or four aught, I'm sorry, oh, it only in copper in this one, two gauge copper conductors uh, for the uh, line side and a six gauge equipment grounding conductor and an inch and a quarter raceway. It's going to tell me that it's uh, 225 amps on the secondary with 4 aught copper rated 230 amps and a 2 gauge bonding jumper, 2.5 inch raceway, and then it's just going to run through all the calculations and how every single one of those numbers was calculated. And again, additional resources in this case is a document. It's a PDF. So if we click that, we'll go ahead and click it and see if it pulls it up here, and there it is. That's just a document that we found useful, and we decided, hey, let's go ahead and make that available as part of the app here. So, that is Mike Holt's Electrical Toolbox, and that's the Cliff Notes. Now, if you watch the videos, you're going to see us use this Toolbox app a lot. And as we use it, believe it or not, we, f we get feedback and we find out more and more things that need to be tweaked or that people might want to have added. And I would just encourage you to use it, submit feedback to us, let us know what you like about it, let us know what you don't like about it. Again, we're working on all of our software every day, and uh, it's definitely something that we would love to hear from you guys on. So, Dan, do we have any final questions before we wrap it up for the night? Okay, uh, no questions, but Daryl says, hey... What about all those insulators on top of your cabinet? So, Daryl, um, I am a third generation electrical contractor. And uh, when I got my electrical contracting license, I don't know, it's probably close to 20 years ago at this point. My, uh, my first license I ever got, I actually, one of the first jobs I ever did was I worked um, a bunch of distribution facilities on the railroad. And I started collecting insulators at that point. We would come into a lot of these old rail stations where they were buying these properties and they would pull down all of the, I, I called them telegraph poles, but I don't think they were actually telegraph poles. I think they were just some sort of railroad communication wires. But whatever the case is, there'd be tons of these things on the poles. And so I would find one that I liked here or there and uh, just kind of collect them up. And then over the years, as I see one that's different than what I have, I just pick it up at an antique shop or the flea market or whatever it happens to be and add it to my collection. So that's, uh, that's my story to my old time electrical insulators. All right, guys. Well, it uh, was great to have you guys with me tonight. I hope you kind of enjoyed reviewing the capacitor. Feel free to contact me about that and the Mike Holt Electrical Toolbox app. You're going to see a lot more about both of those uh, in the future at some point. We are having a live CEU seminar. If you have signed up for it, you'll be getting some uh, activation information and enrollment information probably later this week. If you haven't signed up for it, go over to the website, website if you need CEUs and check it out. It's going to be a lot different than uh, the typical format. We've got a really cool system. We're leveraging some pretty amazing technology to uh, allow you to attend virtually and actually get recorded just like you're at a live seminar you'll have the opportunity to submit chat questions with Mike just like we do every single week on the Tuesday night live stream. Uh, it's really, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. We're going to cover all sorts of great stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed tonight and I look forward to, oh, I, I would be a failure if I didn't mention this. Guys, we're not going to be here next Tuesday night because, it's okay, relax. Starting Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we are recording the Understanding the National Electrical Code Volume 2, and it is going to be chapters 5 through 8 of the NEC. If you want to join that, you need to go, If you, if, I don't know where you're watching, because you might be on Facebook, you might be on YouTube, wherever you're at. Go to MikeHolt.com forward slash live and register. You'll get a actual notification, but starting on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we will live stream the behind the scenes of the recording. And you can actually watch for free 
what you would normally have to pay a lot of money to get, and that is the entire Understand the National Electrical Code Volume 2 video. It is a it's it's it is a stream of the live production. So, you know, if you're expecting to get this polished finished thing, no 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 no. This is behind the scenes. This is the real deal. This is the nitty gritty. This is where, you know, we're getting in there and we're like, oh, wait, that's not what that means. This, it should say this. So you're actually going to see like the process that we actually engage in to create the videos. Uh, the videos are not available after they're streamed. They're gone once they're streamed. So it's kind of fun. And you get to see some of the fun stuff. I think this time is going to be a little smaller group. COVID-19 kind of restricted where we could record at. And in fact, actually, we built a studio here at my office. Um, so it's going to be Mike Holt. He's flying in from New Mexico. It's going to be Eric Stromberg. It's going to be Mario Valdez. If you've been watching any of our other live streams, you've seen Mario and Eric on the other video panels and myself. And we are going to explore the basically the big rules between Chapter 5 and Chapter 8 that are impacting the electrical industry today and how those apply each and every day to the jobs that we do. So look forward to seeing you guys there. I hope you'll uh, engage with us there. And if you can just drop in sometimes, uh, it'll stream again Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, we'll be off Thursday. Then we will be doing a private stream for the live webinar on Friday and Saturday. And then I have a feeling we're going to be really tired. So we may not be in that following Tuesday. We will see. But just uh, check back here. Thanks so much for joining us, guys, and I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you.